Hello there. Ah, so I took a nap earlier. I was so sleepy today. Um, and I'm, I'm practicing a popped collar today, but I need a little starch to keep it up. So it's going to get floppy as we go. I'm sort of channeling, um, Jane Fonda from Grace and Frankie. Um, <laughs> anyway, so today we are talking about putting yourself out there. So I would love to know for those hopping in, um, do you find it challenging or a little scary to put yourself out there? Or do you feel completely frozen about it? Like, do you just not do it at all because you just can't get over the fear? I'm curious, let me know in the chat. Yes, Beth, love me some Grace and Frankie. I'm excited to start watching it. Um, we've had a lot of Ted Lasso to catch up on and now we're back in sex education, but Grace and Frankie will be next. Um, okay, so let me know who has trouble putting themselves out there. And I, you, you know, you don't have to tell me. I know folks do. Uh, yes, Lena says it's safer not to step out. Uh-huh. Was anybody here on my live yesterday where we talked about um, the surprising reason why you can't focus? Um, Morgan Lulu says, I know I don't have my messaging dialed in. I don't feel confident about my services. Sarah loves happiness. I do it, but it's hard to know what people want to hear. I love showing up, just not sure what to share. Oh, Sarah, I could help you with that. Um, guess what? The titles of all my lives this week are based on asking our community because I don't know what you need. I just ask you and then you tell me and then I give it to you. Um, when our community told me they were having trouble focusing, I was like, oh, I can help you with that. But I wouldn't have known that unless I asked. When I asked, you know, what are you struggling with? A lot of folks said, I'm scared to put myself out there. I'm, I don't have the confidence. I'm afraid the thing's already been done before. Um, yes. Oh, Beth is saying, I definitely feel the shift of people so ready to cancel people. Yeah. Okay. So I can really speak to that one from a deep, deep personal, personal, uh, place, Beth, you know, it, you know, and some others know, um, there's been, you know, it's been, it's been a heck of a time, right? Um, oh, I love this. Skel Skeleton crew says, I always step out. I just don't always feel seen or heard. So interesting. Okay. So let's talk about it all. Yes, that conscious life. So many people are saying the same thing. Okay. Okay. So yesterday we talked about focus and you can go back and, and watch that IGTV uh, if you want later. It's also on my YouTube and Facebook. Um, and I'm going to remind you of the same thing because I am assuming many folks were not also on that conversation. So I'm going to do a quick recap. And the recap is, how many of you think, I'm going to ask, how many of you think that the problem with putting yourself out there and feeling scared to put yourself out there is because of a lack of confidence, because there's fundamentally something wrong with you and that you need to build your confidence? I'm curious. Is that, hi, Jackie, great to have you here. Um, anybody feel like the problem is them? that if you're not putting yourself out there, it's because there's something wrong with you, that you are the problem. Yes, Lena says yes. Okay, I'm curious for others. Yes, Sarah, yep, says yes. I see a lot of hearts here. Okay, so here's the deal. There are so many things that hold us back, being unfocused, being distracted, um, self-sabotaging behaviors, all of these different things, right, that hold us back from the, you know, reaching the business dreams we want or the career dreams we want. And the world would have us believe that the reason we can't focus or the reason we're, we're scared to put ourselves out there is because we lack something. Like there is something missing in us that we need to work on. Like we need to make ourselves stronger, um, we need to make ourselves more confident. We need to fix ourselves to get over that block. And usually the offering that the personal development industry gives you with offering that the business uh, industry, I just had my little uh, Instagram notification come up that my time limit is done for the day, but I'm going to keep going because we're here, right? Uh, so the offering that the personal development industry gives you, the offering that the business world gives you is mindset work. So if you just work on your mindset, you'll have all the confidence you need, right? Or we hear, feel the fear and do it anyway. Anyone get the suggestion like, you know, 
just go live, just like do it a million times, you know, that sort of like idea of immersion therapy where you just say, okay, I'm gonna commit to 30 days of lives in a row or I'm gonna commit to this and I'm just gonna, basically what that does is it numbs you <laughs> to the fear so that you just are becoming more and more dissociated. So what, it is so much more than that, the conscious life, it is so much more, it is so much more. Here's what it is. If you are somebody who identifies as female, um, if you are somebody who has a different marginalized uh, identity, you know, we have all these different intersectional identities, and if you are somebody who is not a straight, white, cisgendered, heterosexual, good-looking man, then basically the whole world is out there telling us we're doing it wrong if you aren't sort of that like standard human. Most of the people on the planet are not the standard human that has been held up as like the ideal. And so of course we are scared to put ourselves out there because we have so much evidence from our own lived experience that it is not actually safe, literally and emotionally. Like there are people who, there are people who get physically harmed for putting themselves out there, right? In a variety of places. Think about, um, you know, the amazing story of Malala, right? Uh, Malala put herself out there to stand up for what she believed in and she got shot. Now she lived and it's, her story is incredible, but we have so much evidence. So this is, uh, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Valerie Rain who wrote Patriarchy Stress Disorder. This is what I learned from her. I learned that there are four kinds of traumas that we hold in our bodies. There's little t traumas, big t traumas. So little t are, um, you know, the little things like, for example, when I get on an Instagram live with, um, with another woman interviewing them, there are like hundreds of trolls who come on and say disgusting things in the chat about porn and boobs and take off your top and all this stuff, right? It's a little t trauma. Can I handle it? Yes, no big deal. But at the same time, like it, it, it lives in my body as an experience that shows me it's not fully safe to be seen. Then there's big T, t traumas, which those are the really awful things that, um, you know, assault and rape and, and, and you know, all, all sorts of things like that. Those big T traumas. And then there are collective traumas. So that story I just told you about Malala, that's, co that's a collective trauma that lives in all of our bodies if we identify with Malala in some way, knowing, okay, because it wasn't safe for her, it's also not safe for me. And then we have our ancestral traumas. And our ancestral traumas are the things that live in our cellular DNA that we don't even know why we're freaked out by this one thing, but we are. So here's an example of the data around this, and this is epigenetics. Um, they took some rats in a lab and they piped in the scent of cherry blossoms and then they shocked the rat's paws. Then what they noticed, so then they, they tra changed it over time and the rat's babies, they would pipe in the scent of cherry blossoms and the rats still freaked out. They had a fear response. So they weren't shocked, just one generation and then they did it again. So two generations away, the rats, two generations away from the rats who had initially been shocked, just had a fear response from the scent of cherry blossoms. It was totally irrational. They had never been shocked while smelling cherry blossoms, but their bodies remembered because our bodies were made in the bodies of our ancestors. And that DNA is passed down, that, that, uh, that DNA memory is passed down. And so we have things that we are living out as ancestral traumas in this lifetime that we don't even know what they are. But think about what your grandmother went through, what your great grandmother went through, what your great, great, great grandmother went through. So no wonder you're scared to put yourself out there. So I'm just here to say, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're doing great. We live in a world where we have a lot of evidence that it is not safe to be a woman and it is not safe to be a powerful woman putting herself out there and really a powerful person putting themselves out there. But 
you know, we could get into a whole thing about that. I'm just mostly talking to women right now because that's how I identify and that is the majority of um, our community here. But that doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't apply to men and, um, and all gender identities, especially non-binary people. So what do we do about it, right? So if we know, okay, I'm scared to put myself out there, but, but achieving my business dreams is gonna require me to put myself out there. What do I do about the fact that like, yeah, it's not my fault. My nervous system, because of the traumas that live in my body, my nervous system is doing what it's designed to do, which is keep me safe. And it is giving me a tremendous fear response when I want to put myself out there and it is stopping me from doing that because your nervous system is designed to keep you safe and it's doing a great job. It is doing its job. So if you're scared to put yourself out there, your whole system is actually working properly, right? If you're working according to design, there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with our culture. There's something wrong with our culture. And so what do we do about it? Well, number one, we don't do mindset work because mindset work you can't, so you cannot talk your body out of something that it remembers, that it knows. Our traumas are kept in our body. There's a wonderful book called The Body Keeps the Score um, that talks about how things, our memory lives in our body. And then we think, oh, let me just do some mindset work and, and I can just overcome it in our mind. You cannot. Your mind cannot overcome the patterns that are deeply seated in your body. But what can overcome them is putting your body first. So what I talk about a lot in my work is body first, business second. One of the reasons for that is because our nervous system is running behind the scenes almost everything. Because we are animals, right? Like we think we're separate from nature, but we are not. We are animals and we are designed to survive. Like that's fundamentally the programming that is running underneath the surface at all times. Survive and procreate. Survive and procreate. So how do we work with that when we're trying to like build a platform and start a podcast and you know run coaching programs and start an online store and you know like what is what does being an animal have to do with those things? Everything. If you work with your animal nature instead of against your animal nature, you can actually make your contribution in the world, make your work even more powerful. So one of the things that I teach and that we practice in my communities is putting our bodies first, knowing that body first is going to allow you to work with your nervous system so that you're nervous, so that you're not trying to overcome your nervous system, but you're actually working with your nervous system and with the flow of your productivity uh, cyclically, which is a whole other conversation for another day, to be able to get your work done in a focused way, put yourself out there, shine in the way you were meant to. And so how do we do it? We work on nervous system healing. We unravel the traumas. We go from traumatized to over time healing those traumas. And we do that by putting our body first. So there's so many different techniques and you know I talk about them all the time, but tomorrow I am teaching a live workshop called the productivity myth. Spoiler alert, the productivity myth is that if you just worked the Tetris of your schedule properly and got everything to fit in together with your mind through some technique that some old white guy created, <laughs> that you would get it all done and then you would be successful. But that is a lie. The myth is that if we just fit more in, we would be able to get it all done. The truth is, if we focus on the right things, and we do so from a place of wholeness, wholeness, a healed whole body, healed whole nervous system, and we do from a place of feeling calm and complete, then we're able to show up and do the things that matter. So it's not about getting more done, it's about doing the things that matter with our full presence. And that full presence piece is important because the frequency that we bring to our work is critical. Dr. Joe Dispenza's work around frequency in the quantum field really shows us that the energy we bring to something is equally as important to what then as what we are doing. So how we are doing something and the energy we bring to it are just as important as what we are doing. So I'm teaching this live workshop 
start starting tomorrow. I'm teaching it live uh, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, and you can go ahead and sign up at Origin Membership. Whoops, Origin Membership dot com forward slash workshop. So go ahead and sign up there. If anybody's here who already is signed up for the workshop, go ahead and let me know. I'd love to say hi. And what we're going to do during that workshop is go through three easy tactics to help you focus on what matters and get the business results that you want without burning out. And these tactics, especially tactic number three, are going to help you to overcome your fear of putting yourself out there, but not by pushing through. Um, I see you love your biz, uh, not by pushing through, but instead by healing, right? So the grind culture tells us just push through, but what we are practicing in our communities here, the origin membership, et cetera, is healing ourselves so that we can do our best work not by pushing through, not by um, just grinding and just doing it harder, even if we're scared, but just actually by healing ourselves. So Reach Your Goals Academy, excited to have you there on the workshop. Miss Onai, excited to have you there on the workshop. Jack, excited to have you there on the workshop. Um, Bespoke Mentoring, so excited to have you there. It's going to be so great. I just went over the slides just before I was coming on here. Um, Sandra says, I think I am, I want to join, but my nervous system is in overload. So Sandra, I totally get it. We have so much information coming at us. Um, and so I, I hear you, you know, life is really full and there's a lot of different things to pay attention to. But here's what I want you to know. If you are not moving forward in your life and in your business, if you have one, knowing the information I'm going to be sharing about the nervous system and knowing what to do about it and knowing how to get yourself into a state of parasympathetic nervous system to do your best work. It doesn't even matter the rest of the stuff you are paying attention to. Like without this information, everything else will be a hundred million times harder than it needs to be. And so if you would prioritize one thing this week, it is really going to this workshop and especially tuning in for tactic number three that I'm going to be sharing. Um, the, the, the meat of the workshop will probably be 45 minutes. And then at the end, I will invite you to learn more about the origin membership. So I'm always full disclosure about that. So if you were going to do one thing this week, hi Belinda, if you were going to do one thing this week, come to the workshop because without the information about your body that I'm going to be sharing about midway through, everything else is so effed. <laughs> like, I really wish I had known this stuff earlier. I really wish we had all known this stuff earlier. And when I learned it, it was such a profound game changer to me that I dedicated my life to sharing it with you. Like, this information about putting your body first and healing your way to more powerful work instead of pushing your way to more powerful work is literally, I think, the key to our liberation on so many levels. And I could get into all the reasons why, but basically come to the workshop because it's really that important. <laughs> so I hope you'll be there, Sandra. Um, I hope everyone else will be there too. If you are tuning in after the workshop has happened, you can still grab the replay. So you can still head over there. And um, I look forward to seeing you and just listen, listen to your body today. That's your call to action is to sign up for the workshop originmembership.com forward slash workshop. But your second assignment is just to be like, hey, oh yeah, like I have a body. Okay, let's just start there, right? That's what we know 100% for sure is that we are definitely gonna die and that while we're alive, we just have this one body. So we might as well get into a really great relationship with it. All right, thank you so much, Nadine. I will see you there for the workshop. Thank you, everybody. Tag in a friend who needs to hear this information. Mwah. Thanks for being here. Bye.